Hello and welcome to our Christmas decoration tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be sharing with you how to make some of these cute felt Christmas decorations and we've got a variety for you to choose from, from a gingerbread man, a Rudolph, an angel, a heart, a gingerbread house, a robin and a Christmas pudding. If you want to download this pattern we'll put a link to that in the description box below. Then you're going to need to start by collecting up your supplies. Start by collecting up the supplies that you're going to need to create your decoration. You're going to need some felt and the colour of this will depend on what you're going to create in terms of the decoration. You're going to need some embroidery thread and some stuffing and we used a 100% polyester toy stuffing. You're also going to need some things to decorate your decoration and these can be a selection of ribbons, can be beads and buttons and you're also going to need a ribbon of some description to be able to hang up the decoration. Now you can draw out the decoration shape that you would like or you can download them from our website and we'll put a link to this in the description box below. We recommend that you draw them out onto cards for ease. In terms of the equipment you need, you're going to need a pen, a pencil, chalk, something to be able to draw around your template, some scissors, some pins and a needle for the hand sewing that we're going to do. So I'm going to let you to collect up your supplies and then you can join me back here with your template and your felt so we can get started. Position your template onto the felt colour of your choice and you're simply going to draw around it. I would recommend that you do this with a removable pen, but you can use a biro or pencil if you haven't got one. You'll just need to make sure that you, when you cut this out, that you actually trim off the biro or pencil marks so that you can't see that on your nice decoration. And you're going to need to do this twice for every decoration that you want to make. So we're going to need to have two of these. We're going to be making the gingerbread man in this tutorial and we're going to need to have two of these shapes. Cut around the shape using a small pair of scissors. And if you had drawn your line on with biro, you do want to try and trim that off now. And you're going to need to do this for two shapes for each decoration that you're wishing to create. So I'm going to be sewing one gingerbread man and I need a back and a front for him. Join me back here when you've done that. Now you should have cut out two pieces of felt for each of the decorations that you're planning on creating and you're going to position these together. And what I would recommend here is that the side that you drew on with the pen that you tried to trim off, you put that those pieces together so that the pen is hidden from the right side. And you're just going to position them together and put a few pins through to hold the layers. Once you've pinned your shape together, we're going to begin by completing a blanket stitch around the edge. We do need to leave an area open, so a hole, so that we can stuff the decoration afterwards. Now for the gingerbread man we recommend that you start about here on the neck of the gingerbread man and we're going to work all the way around back up to the other neck so that we can stuff him and then sew up the head. Now we've decided to work with an embroidery floss and we've divided the floss into three threads because we don't need to work with the whole six threads and we have tied a knot at the end. To complete the blanket stitch you're going to need to take your needle and thread and we're using the embroidery floss and we've tied a knot at the end of this and we're going to start by going in between the two layers so that the knot is hidden and coming out on the right side and we can just hide that knot from view. Now the first stitch for a blanket stitch is slightly different. You're going to need to go from the back of the two layers of felt to the front coming out exactly where the thread had come out previously and pull that through. Now we've got a loop that's been created and we're going to go through the loop 
from the front to the back. And there you have your first stitch. Now the rest of the stitches are going to be the same from now on. We're going to go from the back of the two layers of felt to the front of the two layers of felt with our needle and bring that through. We'll have created a loop and we're going to go from the front to the back of the loop. The same again, from the back of the two layers of felt to the front, create the loop and then from the front to the back of the loop. And you're going to work this all the way around. You want to try and be consistent with your stitch size. I would aim for about a quarter of an inch, five millimeters in the length of the stitch. And I'm traveling with my needle about an eighth, three millimeters from the edge of the felt fabric. Now, if you want a slightly longer video on how to do this, we have a video on how to complete the blanket stitch. And we will put a link for that in the description box below. Now I'm going to ask you to complete this all the way around your shape. Um, as I mentioned previously, with the gingerbread man, we're going to complete this from the neck all the way around until we get to the other neck, leaving the head open to allow us to stuff the hands and feet. So you will need to leave an opening on the other shapes as well so that you can stuff them. Now the gingerbread man has been sewn up with the blanket stitch from the neck point on this side all the way around to the neck point on this side. We're now going to use some stuffing to get into the legs and the arms. Taking a polyester toy stuffing, you're just going to want to use small amounts and get into all of the extremities. And you really don't want to stuff them too much, it's only a small amount of stuffing that we tend to use. And you want to do this until you're happy with the plumpness of your shape. Once you're happy with the amount of stuffing that you've added to your shape, you're then going to continue where you left off sewing with the blanket stitch. And we're now going to work our way around the head. However, we need to remember at the top center of the head that we're going to add a piece of ribbon so that you can hang your decoration. So we're going to complete the blanket stitch till just off the center of the head and then I'm going to show you how to insert your ribbon for hanging. Now as you can see I've completed the blanket stitch up to the top of the head and here I'm going to actually position in some ribbon for being able to hang the decoration. Now you need to get, cut yourself a length of ribbon that measures four inches which is ten centimeters and fold it in half. You're going to position the two raw edges of the ribbon in between the two layers of felt. And you want to do this in about the center of your shape, whatever you're working with. You want to position in about half an inch, one centimeter of ribbon into the shape between the two layers of felt. And you can just pin that to hold that in place. Now you're going to want to continue sewing the blanket stitch right up to the edge of the piece of ribbon. And then we're going to actually do a small little running stitch because it will be easier along this edge. So rather than completing the blanket stitch, we're simply going to go in from the back of the two layers of felt to the front and pull that through. And then you're going to go forward by about one eighth, three millimeters from the front of the layer of felt to the back. And you can check by looking at the back that it's as neat as it is on the front of your decoration. And we're gonna do another one. We're going to come up one eighth from the last stitch, which is three millimeters. Again, checking that it's neat on the back and bringing that through and then one eighth from where we came out, we're going to go back to the back and again checking it's neat on the wrong side. We can take that pin out there. So just a very simple running stitch just to hold the layers and the ribbon together. Once you get to the other side, we can start to do the blanket stitch again. We're simply going to go from the back to the front and you're going to need to restart 
So we're simply going to come from the back to the front and then from the back to the front again, coming out where your thread came out previously and going through the loop from the front to the back. And then you can continue sewing the blanket stitch from the back to the front and through the loop from the front to the back. Now, while you've got a small gap here, I would recommend stuffing the head of the gingerbread man. Stuff the head and the rest of the body of the gingerbread man to the desired plumpness. Once you're happy with that, you're going to finish sewing the blanket stitch all the way along back to the start. If you do that, I'm going to show you how to finish off the blanket stitch when you get back to the start. So as you can see, I've completed the last stitch before getting back to the start. Now I'm going to complete one more stitch. Here. And then to finish, I'm going to go from the back to the front, coming out where the last stitch was, and then go from the front to the back through the loop again. To make sure that that's secure, you can either tie a little knot here, or you can lose your thread inside the shape. So to do that, we're simply going to go with our needle and thread in between the two layers of felt, coming out anywhere, it doesn't really matter, and pull that through. You're going to pull tightly on this thread, take a small pair of scissors and cut it off right at the bottom of the thread where it comes out from the felt. And because you've pulled tightly, should completely disappear afterwards. So as I said, we do have a specific tutorial on how to sew the blanket stitch. So if you would like to have a look at that, we'll put a, a link to that in the description box below. Otherwise, you've now created the shape of your decoration and it's time to start decorating them. Now the two main things that we did in terms of decorating were to sew on other pieces of felt, buttons or beads, or to sew on ribbons. Now it's time to decorate your decoration. With the gingerbread man, we decided to add little bits of ribbon onto the arms, legs, and a little bow that we just tied with a little bit of the ribbon. It's not viewable on the back. And we hand sewed these all on with a little slip stitch or a fell stitch. This is what we used to sew most of the decorative things onto the decorations. So we're going to show you how to do that now. Pin on the details that you want to add onto your decoration. And by this point, you probably will start to create a right side and a wrong side of your shape. Now, we're going to be sewing this with a normal thread. So a 100% polyester, this is a Gutemann sew all thread but any sort of standard thread will do. And the reason we're using that rather than the embroidery thread is because it's finer and therefore it will be less visible. We've tied a knot at the end and you're simply going to go right into the edge of your ribbon or whatever you're sewing on. As I said, the same process will apply for the shapes if you want to sew extra felt on or any little bits and pieces that you want to sew on. This will be one of the best stitches to use because it's pretty much invisible. And we'll bring that through and that should hide the knot, which we can trim off that little tail of in a second. Now, what we're going to do is we've come out right on the edge of our piece of ribbon here. We're going to go directly from where we came out above into the fabric or the felt of the gingerbread man. And we're going to go along by about an eight, three millimeters or so, and come out again on the edge of the ribbon. And we'll pull that through. And this is what's often referred to as a slip stitch or a fell stitch. And as you can see, it's pretty much invisible when I'm using a white thread on a white ribbon. Again, I've come out right on the edge of the ribbon here, going directly above it into the felt, along for about one eighth, three millimeters, 
coming out right on the edge of the ribbon and pulling that through. And this is what you're going to do to sew these little things on. It can be time consuming, but you'll get a really nice finish. And as I said, the stitching will be pretty much invisible. If you don't have the time to do that, then of course you could just do a standard running stitch right through the center of the ribbon and that would hold it on. Or you could even whip out some craft glue or a glue gun. It's really up to you and the time that you have to create your decorations. We decided to sew on beads for eyes on a number of the decorations. We also sewed beads down the center of the gingerbread man. But beads or buttons would be fantastic and we have used buttons on some of the other places as well as some bells. So we're going to show you how we would sew those on now. Again, working with these, I would recommend working with a normal thread. And when you're sewing on the beads, and this goes for the buttons and the bells as well, I would recommend sewing a double thread and tying a knot at the end, just because it will be quicker. So I tend to like to pin on my beads just so that I get the placement right. I would also probably draw them on first so that I know where I want them. Do be careful though, because I've got a pin coming through at the back there. So just be careful if you decide to use this technique. Now I'm going to take my thread behind where I want the eye to be first and just put that in and out of the felt and pull that through. Now I've got a little knot on the end, but I'll trim that bit of, of thread off afterwards. I'm going to go over that just to secure it. Okay, now I'm going to take my pin out and I'm going to go through the hole on my bead. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to trim those little threads off now because I think they're going to get a bit messy otherwise. There we go. Now I'm going to, so I've got my bead on my double thread and then I'm going to go in and out of the felt again. Now I'm going to continue with that technique. So I'm going through the bead and then through the felt or the fabric. Same again, through the bead and through the fabric until you feel like it's secure. You won't need to do it too many times. Now I'm just going to do it one last time there, so through the bead again, so that I can get rid of my thread into the fabric. And I'm going to come out now right on the edge in between the two layers of felt. I'm going to pull tight on that and I'm going to cut that off right at the bottom of the thread and that should release to give me a nice finish. And as I said, the same technique can be used for sewing on your beads or your bells or anything that you want to do to decorate your Christmas decorations. So the other thing that I wanted to share with you was how I sewed the mouth for the gingerbread man. Now I did this by completing a small back stitch and if you want to know how to do a back stitch, we have got a back stitch tutorial and I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Now I tend to like to draw my mouth on and this is with a removable pen, this one comes off with water, so that you know what you're working with. I'm going to go back to the embroidery thread for this one. It doesn't really matter but the embroidery thread will show up a little bit better and I haven't got a knot at the end of it. I'm simply going to go in to the felt and my stitch length is going to be about one eight three millimeters. Pull that through and aim to hide. So I've pulled my tail through and then I'm just going to sew over myself. Now 
Now for the next stitch, you're going to go in at the end of this stitch and we're going to go forwards by another stitch. So the thread is currently in the center. Perfect. Now with the thread in the center, we're going to go back to the end or the start of the last stitch and then I'm going to go forwards another stitch. So the loose thread is sitting in the center of that. Perfect. And I'm going to simply work my way around doing this. But any kind of embroidery stitch would be fantastic. Just something that's going to show up and that's going to look nice. Now you can really personalize these and add whatever you want. You obviously don't have to copy what we've done here. But just so that you know, we obviously added the three buttons in the center and we sewed them on just like we did the eyes. We tied a little bit of a bow just on the front, not on the back, and gave that a little bit of a slip stitch, which was the same stitch we used to tie on the ribbon around the arms and legs. For the gingerbread house, we decided to slip stitch or fell stitch onto the front piece of felt, a little snowy roof and two doors. We did this before we actually joined the pieces together because then it allowed us to complete the blanket stitch through all of the layers of felt. And just to get a really nice finish, same you can see there at the bottom. So I would recommend choosing the front piece of your felt and if you wish to add the roof, and the doors, complete the same stitch that we showed you with the gingerbread man and sewing on the ribbon onto the edges of these to make them inconspicuous. Alternatively, you could simply glue them on and then attach everything together with the blanket stitch. We also decided to sew on a button and this would have used the same technique that we used to sew on the beads. For the reindeer, we added this simple little heart, which again is optional. I really want you to be able to personalize these because you can really make them into what you want to. You could, we obviously fasten this with the slip stitch or the fell stitch, which is what we used to sew on the ribbon on the gingerbread man's leg. You could do this prior to attaching the two pieces of felt together with the blanket stitch or afterwards, it really doesn't matter and we attached an eye as a bead and a bell as a nose. And we used the same technique that we used there for the gingerbread man's eyes. For the robin, we sewed on the red little breast and the wing. And the breast we sewed on prior to actually sewing the two pieces of felt together with the blanket stitch, because you can see that we've included this in the blanket stitch here. We attach them using the same slip stitch or fell stitch that we used on the gingerbread man's ribbon. And we also added an eye, just as we did with the gingerbread man. If you would prefer, however, you could always glue these on with craft glue prior to sewing everything together. For the Christmas pudding, we added the little holly and the white top of the pudding. And we stitched those on with the slip stitch or fell stitch. We added the white topping prior to joining the pieces together with the blanket stitch and you can see that there. We sewed on the little berries as beads it's the same way that we did for the gingerbread man's eyes. Now for the hearts we completed a decorative stitch onto the right side of the felt prior to sewing the two layers together. And I'm going to show you how we did that now so that you can copy it if you would like to. We decided to sew on a button in the center, but again, this is really up to you. Now we wanted to share with you how to create this little decorative finish that we did on the front of our hearts. Now I would recommend that you actually draw this on first using chalk or something. We have added this onto the pattern so that when you download the pattern, you'll see the placement of these lines. Now you want to do this with embroidery thread again, and you'll want to tie an embroider a knot at the end of the embroidery thread. Now on the line coming out this way. Now we're going to start at the top 
of this little stitch, the first stitch that you can see there. We're starting at the top of this. And then we're coming, our threads come out there. We've got a knot at the back. And then we're going to come down. And bring that through like so. Now you obviously want to be consistent with the length of these stitches. They're about one eight, three millimeters in length. Now we're going to go out to either side. So we're going to come out onto one side at an angle with our needle from the back to the front. And then we're gonna bring that through and bring, put the needle now at the end of the last stitch. And the key here is in getting the angles correct. So you may find that every now and again you have to undo a stitch and just go back to make sure that you get the angles right and that you're really happy with the outcome. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to come from the back to the front, trying to get the angle right. And then we're going to go back in at the end of that last straight stitch. And this is pretty much the stitch as we work our way along. We're going to want to do a centre one again now. So moving forward the eighth three millimetres and going back in at the end of the last central stitch. And now we're going to work the angles again. So we're going out to the left first at the angle and back in at the ends of the last central stitch. And the same on the other side, out at the angle, trying to be consistent with the angle that you did on the first side, and then back in to the center. And you would keep this going to the length that you would like. Obviously, as you can see here, some of the lengths of the stitches were longer than others. For the angel, you will need to construct it slightly differently because we actually created the wings, the two pieces of felt wings first, and then you will need to sandwich that in between the two layers of the angel's body. You may also wish to attach the angel's belly. We sewed this using a blanket stitch, but actually decided to add beading to our blanket stitch. If you'd like to see how we did that, you can follow the link in the description box below to the other tutorial. And you can sew on the belly using the blanket stitch or the slip stitch. We decided to attach beads onto the front of the belly and you would do that in the same way that we sewed on the eyes of the gingerbread man. Now if you join me back here I'm going to show you how we actually assembled this with the wings and how we attach them into the body of the angel because this is slightly different to the other decorations. Position the two pieces of felt together for the wings and complete a blanket stitch starting at the top edge in the centre all the way around and leave a gap before you fasten it closed with the blanket stitch because you're going to need to add a little bit of stuffing. Position in a small amount of stuffing in between the two layers of felt. And you don't need very much, you just want to give it enough to give it a little bit of padding. It doesn't need to be really thickly stuffed. Once you're happy with how plump that you've made it, we're going to need to take a needle and thread and finish sewing up the gap here so that the wings are completely sewn with your blanket stitch. Now I've finished sewing the blanket stitch to fasten the wings of the angel. Now you're going to need to position the wings between the two pieces of felt for the body. Now the first thing you're going to need to do before you do that is to complete a blanket stitch around the head of the angel. And when you do that, you're going to need to add in your hanging tag or your little piece of ribbon. You're also going to need to add a little bit of stuffing in the head of the angel. 
prior to putting the wings in. Now you're going to position the wings between the two layers of felt. The top of the wing shape is the deeper curve and that's going to go underneath the head of the angel. And then you're simply going to flap that back closed and make sure the wings are sitting in, in the center of the angel and you've got a nice amount showing on either side. You're going to want to place a few pins in to position the two pieces of the angel body together. And now you're ready to start sewing again and you're going to need to sew down and around the body of the angel attaching the wings in place. You will need to leave a gap at one side to be able to insert some stuffing because you'll need to do some stuffing to the front and the back of the wing. Now you'll be able to complete a blanket stitch for most of this, however where the wings are attached we completed a slightly different stitch and we worked with a very small slip stitch. Alternatively you could use the same running stitch that we used to attach the ribbon at the top of the decoration. To attach the wings to the body of the angel you're either going to need to complete a little slip stitch which is the same stitch that we did to attach the details on the gingerbread man. Or you could simply do a little running stitch like we did to attach the hanging ribbon at the top of the decorations. We're going to complete a slip stitch here and I'm just going to briefly show you how to do that. Now I've come out on the edge of the body of the angel. I'm going to go back in directly above this into the wing and then I'm going to go along about a quarter of an inch five millimeters and come out right on the edge of the body of the angel and I'm going to pull that through. Same again, I've come out on the edge of the body of the angel, I'm going to go directly above this into the wing along for about a quarter of an inch five millimeters and out on the edge of the body of the angel. And you would just keep doing this, and the idea with this is that it's, it's almost supposed to be invisible. The thing with this, if you decide to do a slip stitch, is that you will need to do this on both sides. So you're going to need to complete it on this side, the same on the other side here, and on both sides for the other wing. So you'll have four edges to complete with this stitch. Whereas if you choose to do a running stitch, you would be able to go through all of the layers at once. Once you've attached the wings on both sides, you're then going to work your way down and complete a blanket stitch along the side here, the bottom edge, and the side here. I would recommend leaving this area open so that you can stuff the angel and you're going to need to add a little bit of stuffing to the front and to the back of the wing so either side of the wing needs to be stuffed and then you would simply sew this up using the same slip stitch until your decoration is finished. Once you had finished hand sewing up your angel I just wanted to give you a few ideas on how we completed ours. As I showed you in the, in the originally, we decided to actually sew the blanket stitch using beads. And if you would like to do that, we have got another tutorial that will show you how to do that. We'll put a link to that in the description box below. We then decided to sew on the sort of breastplate of the angel. And you can complete this with a slip stitch. It's really up to you. Or a blanket stitch. And then we actually just sewed on the beads for a little bit of decoration. And you would do that using the same technique that we used to sew on the gingerbread man's eyes. And there you have it, your Christmas decorations. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you feel able to be able to create some of these felt Christmas decorations at home. Please feel free to personalise them. And we really look forward to seeing what you can make. Thanks for watching. Thank you.